Hi guys, tonight I'm at London's Piccadilly Circus. Now, I've just finished work for the day and I'm here to meet my girlfriend just a few streets away at a new Spanish restaurant and tapas bar. Okay, while we're here, I'll give you my quick tour of London's Piccadilly Circus and then I'm off to meet my girlfriend, check out this new restaurant and bar and get some dinner and drinks. Piccadilly Circus is a road junction and a really busy one at that. It connects Regent Street with Piccadilly, Shaftesbury Avenue and the Haymarket. There's a phrase or saying, it's like Piccadilly Circus here and it's used to describe busy places everywhere because it's one of the busiest spaces here in London. There's a tube station here and from here you're in close proximity to all the West End's main shopping areas, the theatres and all the nightlife, bars, restaurants and clubs of the area. And there's some public space here so it's always been hugely popular for a meeting point, not just for Londoners but for visitors too. I can see people have obviously arranged to meet on the steps of Eros, on their phones and waving, trying to locate one another in the crowds and tourists and visitors taking snaps at this iconic backdrop. And it's also a tourist destination in its own right. I guess the two most iconic things have been the illuminated signs and the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain, which is generally just called Eros. There are often some street performers here and you'll always see people sitting on the steps of Eros, either somewhat hypnotised by the LED signs, just watching the world go by or watching someone perform. The statue everyone simply calls Eros is surrounded by many myths and urban legends, but it started out in 1892 or 1893 as a memorial fountain to commemorate the life and work of the Victorian gentleman and politician, the 7th Earl of Shaftesbury. But apparently, the statue is not even Eros, it's his twin brother, and by all accounts, at the time of its unveiling, the fountain was a doomed disappointment. A flawed design, a compromise of the designer's symbolic ideas and the council's utilitarian objectives and location for the piece. Some loved it right from the start, but the designer, I believe, was ridiculed and criticised so badly by some of the press and public. He later called for it to be scrapped for the metal and the money be used to provide night shelters for the poor sleeping at the time down on London's embankment. Maybe because Lord Shaftesbury was a supporter of the poor, he felt it would be more symbolic. And unfortunately, it's an issue that although we certainly understand a little more, we still face every day a century later in London, if we choose to, that is. Over a century later, the fountain has been tinkered with, moved, it's now a statue, not a fountain, and public opinion has changed. It's become a much-loved icon, affectionately known as Eros. Now one London newspaper even uses it as an illustration on their logo. This relatively modern sculpture of the four horses of Helios at the corner of Piccadilly Circus and the Haymarket is fantastic. The fountains give the piece a real sense of movement, being at street level and not up on a plinth. It gives you a great perspective of it and a photo opportunity too good for many passers-by to miss. Okay, I better go and meet my girlfriend for dinner. We're gonna try a new Spanish style restaurant and tapas bar here in Piccadilly. We're very lucky here in London, we have some amazing Spanish style restaurants and bars. I actually worked next to a tapas bar for many years. The aroma from the kitchen started to fill parts of the office by mid-morning, which some of my colleagues were always moaning about. But I loved it, and part of my job was entertaining clients and suppliers in the tapas bar. I ate hundreds of tapas dishes over the years and I never tired of it. I loved it so much I still took my girlfriend for dinner there after work. One of my long-time favourites is a small group called Brindisa. They have a shop at London's Borough Market importing and supplying Spanish produce and selling street food on market days. They've got a school teaching ham carving and they've got a handful of restaurants and bars here in town. Unlike many groups or chains, it's not a case that once you've been to one, you've been to them all, as each one, although they often share the popular classics, each one aligns itself with a different region or style of cooking and service, so each one is a different experience. Each one has its own signature dishes and style. So I'm excited to try their latest restaurant here in Piccadilly. It's called Moroda Brindisa Asador, I think. Sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of that. 
The menu they say is centered around the tradition of roasting pork and lamb in a vast wood-fired oven known in Spain as an asador. And the menu is mostly focused around cooking over charcoal and roasting, stewing and braising meat, seafood and vegetables to create traditional Spanish dishes from all of Spain's regions. So let's go and check it out. Because this is the launch of the restaurant, the reservations had been made via a friend of my girlfriend's by email and there'd been a little bit of a miscommunication so rather than having a table reserved we were actually a no-show for the previous day. Oh that's it, so I said Friday the 5th. So yeah, the reservation had been made for Friday the 5th, it is in fact Friday the 6th, so we explained the mistake, apologised and luckily they had seats at the bar for walk-ins, which I'm kind of glad about because rather than being sat at the table around the edge, we had front row seats at the bar for all the action in the open kitchens. The menu looks interesting, a few popular tapas classics, but different to the other Brindisa menus. I love Padron Peppers, a sort of game of Russian roulette but with chilli peppers because apparently, although most are very mild, a small minority are really hot and the only way to find out is to eat them. So I'm definitely going to get some peppers but what I'm looking forward to is trying some of the new things. I've got a beer and my girlfriend's got a small glass of sherry to help us look through the menu and the thing I love most about tapas is the sharing of the small plates. We'll have a drink, talk about what sounds good on the menu, order a couple of dishes, then have a drink and a chat and go again and keep repeating it until we've had enough. And there's no food envy. You're never wishing you've ordered what the other person's got because you're sharing everything. And if you see something that you like in the kitchen or the waiter or waitress walking past with someone else's dishes, even the person sitting next to you, their food looks and smells amazing, you can just add it to the next round of food. Okay, to kick things off with the food, we've ordered a plate of Padron peppers and a small plate of Ibirico ham. There are hams hanging round the bar and you can watch it being hand carved. It's delicious. Dark red meat marbled with fat which just melts away when you eat it. Sweet, nutty and not too salty. Okay, we've had a drink and a chat and now we're ready for our next round. So we've uh, gone for coca bread with tomatoes some potatoes with pork and some red wine. Oh, and we ordered some, some pork skewers cooked over the charcoal.
okay after a glass of wine or two and a chat we're ready for round three on the food and we've gone for some grilled lamb cutlets with refried garlic chickpeas and spinach Okay, after uh, another drink and another chat, we're ready for round four and we're going for half a kilo of Iberico Pressa, very rare Spanish pork. This was without doubt my favorite dish of the evening. Perfectly cooked and it Tastes delicious. Okay, round five, and probably the toughest decision because after the previous four rounds we couldn't possibly eat more than one dessert, we're going to have to share one. We couldn't decide between the almond cake or the dark chocolate muscatel cake. But as you can see, the dark chocolate cake. Okay, well that was Brindisa Piccadilly. I loved it, would highly recommend it. Very central location, busy bar and restaurant. It has the theatre of an open kitchen. They were very welcoming, considering we were a day late. Um, friendly and relaxed service and we had a, a great barman looking after us for the evening. If you're looking for dishes say more typical of tapas bars, Brindisa have another restaurant very close by in Soho doing just that and you can check out their different menus on the website. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video please hit the thumbs up like button. If you'd like to be the first to see my new videos, the subscribe button. Toodles!